What I would like to spend a little bit of time on, though, is going all the way back to GDP, which we, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Um, if you recall, GDP is Y, which is output, okay, plus C, plus I, plus G, plus NX, all right? And what I want to talk about is saving. So let's look at national saving. Right. Why is output? You guys remember these income equals expenditure. We're talking about expenditure this in. Basically, if you go to Belk and you buy a shirt, uh, if I go buy this shirt, I walk up to the cashier, hand him, hand him the shirt, hand him some money. They give me the shirt back. Uh, it's my shirt now. Um, took $40 out of my wallet, slid it across the counter. Um, that was income for Belk. Expenditure for me, income equals expenditure, it's not an $80 transaction, it's a $40 transaction. It just depends as a nation whether we measure it from my side of the counter as the consumer or the producer side of the, the as the seller. Um, as we talked about, we measure things from a consumer point of view. Um, so this is everything consumers buy, so this is consumption. Save for the purchases of houses, which are typically financed, which make that an investment. Okay. Investment made. Um, keep in mind that also includes uh, stock on the shelves at different uh, businesses, that type of thing. Uh, this is government spending. Huge. Okay. All right. And this is net exports. Now, I'm going to do something here. I'm talking about national, I'm talking about within a nation, what they're doing. And when you look at the U.S. in particular, we have a negative net exports, meaning we import far more than we export. So in terms of national um, saving, uh, particularly in the U.S., and if you looked at this um, in most any country, money that leaves the country can't be saved. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to take net exports out. So what we're left with um, is Y plus C plus I plus G again. If money's going outside of the country, it can't be saved. Um, now, which one of these is most closely tied to saving? Well, I'll tell you what. Consumption, you're not going to save that. Government spending, you had to pay taxes on that. Okay, so that's that's money going out of your wallet. Consumption, that's money going out of your wallet. Output, that's stuff you buy, so that's not money coming in your wallet. But the one that we're interested here that relates to saving is actually investment, okay? So let's solve for investment. So if we bring over C, we bring over G, okay? We can rearrange it as I equals Y minus C minus G, okay? I equals Y minus C minus G. A little bit of rearranging here. Now, what about investment? do we know in terms of saving? Well, you have to have money saved up to be able to invest, yes? Okay, so even if you're buying a house to invest, you have to have a down payment. So you have money saved up. You have to acquire that money somehow, and it's usually through savings. So it's reasonable to say to invest, you've gotta have savings. All right, so I could equal S. So we could rearrange this last equation we derived here as this. Your national saving could be your income, so remember here, that was your output. But remember, we were looking at it from my side of the counter, all right, at Belk's. It was my consumption, my expenditure, all right? My, what I'm taking out of my wallet and putting across, that's expenditure. But who, what is it for Mr. Belk over there? It's income, okay? So we can use interchangeably output and income over here. So this is saving. So basically what I can save, all right, is my income minus what I spend in consuming, consumption, all right, minus what I pay for government spending, all right. Now what's another thing for government spending? All right, so this is G, okay. All right, what's another thing for government spending? Uh, and I, I've used uh, lowercase and uppercase G here interchangeably. It's, it's meant to be the same thing. All right. So you can say G or G. All right. You can say G equals T. So if this is government spending, 
What does the government spend? Taxes. All right, talk about taxes, man. All right, this is taxes. The only form of income for government, taxes. Okay, so we could replace this G with T. So what I can save minus what I earn, or excuse me, what I can save is what I earn minus what I consume minus what I pay in taxes. So think about that. If you get a paycheck, they already take the taxes out. That's the T, okay? This is the taxes, all right? So then you have some money left over. That's disposable income, all right? But your consumption level then, you got to pay your rent, all right? You got to pay the power bill, cable bill, internet bill, whatever it is. You got to put clothes on your back, food in your belly, all right? You got to send your kids to school. That's all consumption, all right? So that's C. But whatever is left over of Y after taking out C and taxes is what you can save, all right? So keep in mind, S equals Y minus C minus T, your national saving. If, if we added that up, so it's true for Jonathan, it's true for every person out there watching this video, all right? It's true, all right? Whatever you save, all right? It comes out of whatever discretionary income you have left over after buying everything you're going to buy, all right, that you have to buy and paying your taxes. So that's national saving. So in the end, just keep in mind, right in blue over here, that saving, all right, equals your income minus your consumption minus your taxes. Now, this is private sector saving. This is private saving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase everything but that private saving. But I feel like you guys have gotten to a point where you're comfortable enough to understand that that is private saving. Let's talk about public saving. Everybody having fun out there? Crazy times we're living in, right? You know, everybody went from talking politics to talking influenza, pandemics, COVID. Where's all our toilet paper going? Craziness. Mm. All right. Now we're starting to hear a few things about, hey, when do we come out of this? Listen, I'm an economist married to a physician. I got a foot in each bucket. What we're doing right now is very, very important in terms of preventing deaths, particularly among the elderly. Um, but at some point, we have to pull out of this. All right. They're thinking around Easter. Listen, the economic impact of this shutdown is going to be tremendous. So when the orange man says, OK, listen, all right, the cure sometimes worse than the disease. He kind of actually has a point. All right. You can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. Ayn Rand once said that. OK, um, there will be economic consequences. But at the end of the day, taking care of people matters, all right? Because a bunch of people die off, that's pretty bad too. But don't forget, bad econ is a disease as well. People can't feed themselves. People get depressed. They got money problems. They have heart attacks that kill themselves. There are other fatalities out there. So we got to balance it, all right? It's commercial break. I can't help myself, all right? We're late recording. I'm in the office by myself and I'm still doing commercial breaks. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about national saving. All right, let's talk about national saving. So if this is private saving, um, which is the income the households have left over after paying taxes and consumption. Um, let's talk about um, public saving, okay? Public saving is um, where you take, so your, your public saving, it's actually quite simple. You don't have to derive it like we did with that. Your public saving is where you take your taxes, okay? That's your only income, only form of income for a government. All right, you minus your government spending, okay? 
T minus G is your public savings. So whatever you have left over is what they can save. Now, what do you want to bet? What do you want to bet? What, what do we typically run in this country? All right. Which one tends to be bigger? This one or this one? Every politician sitting there saying, we need to cut your taxes. It's not fair. Fair place where pays to go get ribbons, by the way. Um, we tend to run deficits where our government spending is a little bit out of control. Okay, a little bit, a lot bit out of control and our income's a little bit lower. So we run deficits. All right, so deficits result year to year. If you spend more, then you're bringing in. If you have deficits, there is no public saving. Okay, so if this is public saving right here, let me highlight it. Then national saving, overall saving for a nation. is simply private saving plus public saving. Public as in public officials do it, in concept at least, okay? So that's the same thing as saying private saving equals Y minus C minus T plus T minus G. That's your national saving. Save you a ton of work on the homework just then deriving that. Okay. Next video, we'll talk about some graphs and why uh, there can be different incentives to get people to save, to invest. And then if you are running deficits, a government has to borrow funds. And if a government's borrowing fund, they're actually competing with private companies who want to borrow funds too, all right? More competition within a market like that actually drives interest rates up and pushes businesses out, in particular, small business. So, ironically, we're talking about a $2 trillion stimulus package. We don't have that money. Government's going to have to borrow it, which actually makes it more difficult down the line for small business to borrow money. So are they helping them? Short run? Yeah. Long run? No way.